everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel if you're here for the first time hi my name is busari Moliayo and i am a registered nurse i'm a nigerian registered nurse and midwife and i'm also a united kingdom registered nurse on this channel i film content related to nursing healthcare and sometimes my lifestyle generally as a registered nurse so if you're interested in content like that do click on subscribe button to join the youtube family and also on the bell icon so you get a notification whenever i drop another amazing video in today's video, I am going to be exploring the Dorothy Orium's self-care theory. I know whenever we hear nursing theories, sometimes we just frown and be like, oh my god, this is going to be a boring class. But don't worry, I'll do my best to make it very interesting and I'll put pictorial examples that will make it very, very engaging. So first, let's start with who Dorothy is. Dorothy is an American nurse and she started a nursing career after she graduated from Providence Hospital School of Nursing in 1934 then she went on to obtain a bachelor of science in nursing education in 1939 and also a master of science in nursing education in 1945 from the catholic university of america so she worked as a nurse and she also worked as a nurse educator as well as a consultant and she's known or she's renowned for a self-care deficit nursing theory now that we are familiar with who Dorothy is, let's go over uh, like an overview of what the theory is really, really about. Dorothy's most notable contribution to nursing practice is a self-care deficit nursing theory. And the theory is actually centered around the concept of self-care as something every human needs. Like it's a fundamental thing that every human must have. And... It is also built around the idea that individuals have the capacity to care for themselves on a normal day and it is only when these individuals are unable to meet their own self-care needs that nursing care becomes necessary. Just similarly to what Virginia Henderson has clearly stated in a definition of nursing, that nurses would assist individuals to do things that they would do normally on their own unaided if they had the necessary will, strength, and we're in the right um, health, healthy state to perform them. So all these theories and definitions are all related. And the main aim of the theory, or the primary aim of a theory, is to empower patients to take an active role in their care by fostering the ability to care for themselves. So that way, they can participate in whatever the nurse is also doing for them to get better. Now that we have an idea of what the Ratorium's theory is, you know, targeted towards or what it is about, let's now talk about the key concepts of a theory. There are some key themes, or should I say key concepts in Dorothy's theory that we should identify and know what exactly they refer to. The first one is self-care, which refers to actions that are taken by an individual to maintain their own health and well-being. Self-care agency is the individual's ability to perform these self-care activities like probably taking their bath, brushing their teeth, taking their own medication, mobilizing and bleeding around. Then you also have self-care requisites which are the requirements that the individuals must meet to perform self-care effectively, possibly agility, being conscious, their age, their posture and other things like that. There is also self-care deficit and this is when the person cannot care for themselves or better put the gap between the individual's ability to perform self-care and the needs that must be met necessitating nursing intervention. Probably the person has a fracture, the person is wounded and in this case nurses now have to come in to help them perform self-care. Finally, you have nursing systems, which are the structures and processes by which nurses provide care to the patients based on the level of the patient's ability to perform self-care. So this would be you taking your, um, should I say, scientific judgment as a nurse to care for the patient. You draw up a care plan, you involve the patients in the care plan, you involve any other healthcare practitioner necessary in developing a care um, plan for that particular patient and you also have to treat the patient individually knowing that what one patient needs to be able to perform self-care is different from what another patient needs to perform self-care now coming back to dorothy's self-care deficit nursing theory it is not just one theory on its own actually it is 
a combination of three interrelated theories. The first path is the theory of self-care. And this path of the theory actually speaks about self-care as the practice of activities that individuals initiate and perform on their own in order to maintain their life, to maintain health and well-being. And she identified some universal self-care requisites, which are basic needs common to all individuals. She talked about maintenance or sufficient intake of air, water, and food, provision of care associated with elimination processes, maintenance of a balance between activities and rest, maintenance of balance between solitude and social interaction, which is being on their own and talking to others. Prevention of hazards to human life, functioning, and well-being. Then finally, promotion of human functioning and development within social groups. So anything that a human being does to maintain all these things that I've mentioned are grouped under the theory of self-care. These are things that they can do independently. So if there is um, water on the floor, they can decide to mop it so they don't sleep and fall. They are hungry, they can eat on their own. They can talk to people, initiate social interaction, and sometimes just be on their own. They can perform activities and know when it's time to rest. All these can be done independently by the patient. The second part of the theory is the theory of self-care deficits, which is obviously when the person cannot care for themselves and they need a nurse in this situation to help them. And... Dorothy actually identified five methods by which a nurse can help a patient, which is acting or doing for them. This is what we would know to be advocacy for the patients when you're trying to um, ensure that the patient gets the best care, guiding them, supporting them, providing an environment that promotes personal development, then teaching. If you take a look at all these activities, it's that basic and fundamental things that we are taught as nurses to do. Educate patients on how to eat, when to take their medications, support them when they cannot do it on their own. If they can't move around, you support them. If they cannot take decisions on their own, sometimes you talk about um, power of attorney, find out who that is. You respect the autonomy. All the ethical principles of nursing come into play in all these parts. And you also ensure that when you're teaching them, you're using clear languages, clear statements, and ensure that they understand before they make decisions. Or when you help them to make decisions, you ensure that you help them to make the best decisions. So everything under self-care deficit are fundamental things that we do as nurses every day at the bedside to ensure that patients are clearly or better cared for when they cannot do it for themselves. The third part of our theory is the theory of nursing systems and this describes how the nurse and the patient interact. Dorothy actually identified three nursing systems based on the level of the patient's self-care ability. First one are only compensatory nursing systems and the nurse in this place the nurse provides all the care because the patient is unable to perform self-care activities. Examples would be unconscious patients or bedridden patients old patients that are very weak and fragile. You have partly compensatory systems, which is when the nurse and the patient share responsibility for care. In this situation, based on your assessment, there are some activities that the patient can perform. Probably the patient can brush their feet on their own, but they cannot have their bath. So you allow the patient to do the brushing and you give a bed bath. Probably the patient can still conveniently take their medications. You pop the pills for them and they take it on their own. So you balance activities that can be done and you promote independence. Then you now have supportive and educative or supportive educative nursing system. This is when the patient is able to perform self-care but requires support and education from the nurse. For example, the patient can even care for their own wound but what they need is they need to know the right materials and the right steps to care in and how to maintain a septic technique to prevent infection. They can go home. These are patients that don't necessarily even need to stay in the hospital. They don't need to be on admission. They can do certain things that should be done for themselves at home, but they need proper education. Probably you can even give them booklets or leaflets to read. Tell them, put a call through to them to check up on them every now and then when they are not um, coming in or calling with complaints. So this is a supportive educative nursing system. I believe now we are beginning to understand what the Radiorium self-care theory is about. 
So if you're not something that you're preparing for exams, you can get practice tests, study guides, and audio lectures on www.nursingwithlight.com. The audio lectures are for free. The um, practice tests, they are all for free. So you can get all of that done preparing you for exams from the comfort of your room to your laptops, your phones, whatever device you want to use to assess the website. Now let's talk about how we can apply the Rateorium self-care theory to nursing practice. So here's a scenario we'll be working with. Mr. Zan is a 58-year-old man diagnosed with type 2 diabetes five years ago. He works as an accountant and leads a sedentary lifestyle that is he sits around, he doesn't move up and down, no exercise, little to no activities. Mr. Azan struggles with maintaining his blood glucose levels due to poor dietary habits and inconsistent medication adherence. He lives with his wife but prefers to manage his health independently. Recently, he has experienced increased fatigue, frequent urination and occasional blood vision, prompting a visit to the hospital for further evaluation. Now, based on Dorothy's first um, part of the three interrelated series that makes up the self-care deficit nursing theory. For the theory of self-care, Mr. Azan obviously has a basic understanding of diabetes management, but his sedentary lifestyle, his poor diet, and the fact that he doesn't take his medications when required indicates a gap in self-care abilities. So here are the interventions. You educate Mr. Azan, provide him with detailed information on how to manage his diabetes more effectively and you let him understand the importance of balanced diet, low in sugars and carbohydrates, regular physical activities, and the correct timing and dosage of his medication. You can now motivate him by working with Mr. Azan to set realistic goals for his lifestyle changes, you know, incorporating a 30 minute daily walk or choosing earlier meal options for him. You can also discuss the potential consequences of poor management of his diabetes, like the complications associated with diabetes management like retinopathy neuropathy which would further emphasize the importance of him caring for himself so you educate mr azan and you also motivate him to stay on the plan the second part of the theory is the theory of self-care deficits and based on this mr azan's self-care deficit is lying in his inconsistent medication adherence and lack of physical activities he also has inadequate dietary choices. Symptoms that he presents with, which are fatigue, frequent urination, blood vision, suggest that his diabetes is poorly controlled and there might be complications setting in very, very soon. So your intervention based on Dorothy's theory is to collaborate with Mr. Zan to create a daily routine, including reminders for medications, meal planning, schedule activities, Provide tools such as a pill organizer and a blood glucose monitoring log to help him stay on track. That is a support that you can give him. Then you also continue to monitor, set up follow-up appointments to monitor Mr. Azan's blood glucose levels, his weight and overall health. You also encourage him to keep a daily record of his blood glucose reading, dietary intake and exercise to identify patterns and maybe areas that he would need improvement. So in the first two theories, we have identified what Mr. Azan can do on his own and areas where the nurse can also come in to help. Now let's talk about the theory of nursing systems, which actually tries to determine the type of nursing care that Mr. Azan requires, which could be from fully compensatory to supportive education. So based on an assessment, Mr. Azan needs supportive educative nursing system. He is capable of managing his diabetes with proper guidance and support but he needs more education and motivation. So your intervention is to provide Mr. Zan with education and resources to enhance his self-care abilities. This could include like dietary counseling, diabetes management classes, stress management techniques. Then you also involve Mr. Zan's wife in his care plan. This is collaborative care to ensure that she understands his dietary and medication needs. And this can help to create like a supportive home environment. He has someone to remind him, someone to encourage him, someone to monitor and someone to always like be with him if there's need to share the activities with somebody else. And it will encourage his adherence to his diabetes management plan.
all right guys i believe now we have a very good understanding i hope you didn't sleep in the middle of the class <laughs> i hope we now have a very good understanding of the right orion self-care theory if you want to see more of my videos you can click here and for more videos on nursing theories click here and i'll see you in my next video bye